um, a more sophisticated example of recursion and one that I think personally is a better fit for recursion than the simple example we started with yesterday. Um, this is a program that works. This is a class that works. It's called Palindrome Tester. Some of you may have explored this last semester as an extension. It prompts the user to enter a palindrome and then it tells them whether it's a palindrome or not. A palindrome is a, a word or more generally a sequence of characters um, that's spelled the same forwards and backwards. So for example, taco cat is a palindrome. Does anyone else have any other favorite palindromes? Or not so favorite palindromes? Yeah. Race car is a palindrome. Other palindromes. There's apparently a fictitious phobia, a fear of palindromes, which is itself a palindrome. I thought that was just mean, but someone looked that up on Wikipedia earlier today. Um, Abel was I, ere I saw Elba. That's a palindrome. A man, a plan, a canal, Panama. Also a palindrome. Um, you have to get rid of like spaces and punctuation, but the letters, the letters are. So anyway, so here is a working algorithm um, that is not recursive to determine if a given sequence of characters is a palindrome. And if we look at this, we have a couple variables, left and right, and we initialize them. And we have this while loop where we check if characters are equal and if left is less than right. And if it's true, we increment left and decrement right, but we don't do anything else. And when all is said and done, if left is less than right, we know it's not a palindrome. Um, and otherwise, it is a palindrome. I am confident that with some sufficient time, maybe it's tracing through the code, uh, you all could figure out and be comfortable with like how this algorithm works. Um, but I would argue that it's not very intuitive. And so what I want to practice together today and then write some code for is how can we try to think recursively in terms of how we could solve the question of a palindrome. And one technique that I think works well for this is pretend that you don't have a computer, pretend that you're not writing code, pretend that you have to solve the problem by hand, and how would you do that? So I imagine I give you a sheet of paper with a thousand characters on it, and I say, is this a palindrome? Okay. Um, we want to adopt the mindset of the lazy dragon. Okay. So we are certainly not going to look at a thousand characters because that's ridiculous. But we are willing to take one small step towards the solution and then pass a simpler problem off for someone else to solve. And the small step we might take is we might look at the very first character on that sheet of paper and look at the very last character on the sheet of paper. And if they're equal, well, maybe it's a palindrome. So far, so good. We could cross out the first character and cross out the last character and hand that sheet of paper to our neighbor and say, hey, by the way, can you check and see if this is a palindrome and let me know? Um, and then they deal with it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it would take us forever. <laughs> um, I, I do have a related in-class activity we'll do later, though. That's very similar. Um, and if the first character and the last character are not equal... Then we know it's not a palindrome and we're done. That's not so hard. We can just say, no, not a palindrome. Okay. I think this is a very natural way to do it. Um, and so it is inherently recursive, right? So the natural approach you would do to solve this by hand is inherently recursive. And so now we can just turn it into code that matches what we would do physically if we had to solve it without a computer. So let's refactor this code. Refactoring is when we change the code to make it better in some way without changing its behavior. So we still want it to identify palindromes. We just want to make the code better. Let's get rid of this whole left-right thing because I don't know what's going on with that. Let's delete all the left-right and the while loops and the prints. And let's instead come up with our own condition for detecting if something is a palindrome or not. One thing that's important is when we're approaching a problem recursively, we need a recursive method. We need a method that we can, in general, maybe always, pass a value to. And in general, but not necessarily always, it returns a value back to us. 
So we can't just put some recursive code right here in the middle of the main method because we can't effectively call the main method recursively. So we're going to have to write a new method, which is probably a good idea anyway from a method decomposition perspective. So our new method is going to be called is palindrome. And we're going to pass a string. And if that string is a palindrome, it will return true. And if it isn't, it will return false. So we better ch change our, our text here. If is palindrome is true, that string is a palindrome, else that string is not a palindrome. Cool. Oops. And then at the bottom, let's write this new method, public static boolean is palindrome. And it takes a single parameter of type string. And now we're going to try to walk through our manual problem solving process and turn that into code. But the first thing we need to do that we always do with our recursive methods is we must have a terminating case. And our terminating case is the simplest problem that we can solve. So what is the simplest string that we can identify as a palindrome or not? Probably the empty string, right? The empty string is definitely a palindrome. Maybe a single character string as well. A single character string is also a palindrome. And maybe we need to handle both because think of the manual operation we talked through. If we started with a string with seven characters and we look at the first and the last and pass on the rest to someone else, that means we're passing along five characters and they are going to pass along three. And the person after that is going to pass along one. So we need to handle a single character as well as no characters. So our terminating conditions can say if str.length is less than or equal to one, we know it's a palindrome. All right, now let's encode what we were going to do by hand. We were going to look at the first character. So we are going to solve a small part of the problem. We are going to be a lazy dragon and just take one small step towards the solution. We need to look at the first character. And to get the first character of the string, we call the substring method, starting at index 0, which is the index of the first character, and going up to but not including index 1. We also need to look at the last character. So we'll use stub string again. We need the index of the last character. This isn't Python. We can't pass negative one. We have to calculate the index of the last character in the string. String.length returns the number of characters in the string. But since we're zero based indexing, the index of the last character will be string.length minus one. And we don't need to specify the second argument because it will go through the end of the string, which is what we want, because we just want that last character. If the first character equals, and I mean equals meaning they have the same character, not that they refer to the same object. So if the first character equals the last character, then we can recurse with a simpler version of the problem. So this is where we turn to the neighbor and we hand them the sheet of paper where the first character crossed out and the last character crossed out and we say, hey, let me know, is this a palindrome? And we hand them the sheet of paper, which would start with the second character, which is at index one, and goes up through, but not including the last character, which is an index of string dot length minus one. If our neighbor eventually comes, returns back to us and says, yes, this is a palindrome, we've already checked our first and last character and know they're equal. So we know that the whole string must be a palindrome and we'll return true as well. We'll simply return whatever they say. If they come back and say false, not a palindrome, well, it doesn't matter that the characters we looked at happened to match. The whole thing didn't. 
Um, so it's not a palindrome and we'll simply return the false that they returned. If the first and last characters are not equal, we're, we're done. We don't need to keep looking. We know it's not a palindrome. It's not productive to keep looking at any of the other characters. We'll simply return false. So finish typing this, compile this, run it, try it with a palindrome, try it with something that's not a palindrome, make sure that it works. I would say the algorithm that, that we've come up with here is an example of tail recursion because we do our work first and at the end the tail we make the recursive call um we could implement this as head recursion we could first make the recursive call and then check the first and last character but i don't think that would be very uh i don't think that would be as good as an approach because it'd be very inefficient because we'd actually check every character all the time for every string even if like the first and last characters don't match and we already know it's not a palindrome. So in this case, I think tail recursion is a more appropriate solution. I'm gonna try a couple to make sure this works. I'll try race car, it is a palindrome. I'll try plain old taco, not a palindrome. Things look good. <laughs> 